ready? It's the Roundtable with me, Robert Bannon. Well, it's the Roundtable. Happy Thursday, everybody. My name is Robert Bannon. I am so happy and excited you are here. Spring has sprung, even though it does not feel that way. It is a Thursday. It is our 101st Thursday that we get to spend together. And how lucky am I? You know, right now on Broadway, Suffs is opening. Hillary Clinton is walking the carpet. The Glitterati are out. But I'd rather be here with you. I'd rather be here with you behind the brick wall, snug as a rug with my dog. Because there's so many events and so much going on on Broadway that I figured we'd spend this, take this night off before, I don't know, openings all weekend long. Let's take a moment to talk about the women the women of Broadway tonight, three incredible powerhouse women are here. Samantha Pauly in The Great Gatsby, Hannah Cruz making her Broadway debut opening in Suffs tonight, and Jordan Tyson, who plays young Allie over at The Notebook. Welcome to the roundtable. My name is Robert Bannon, and I said that already. And hello, Marie, how are you? And my student Sergio wants to know who's going to win the Cup of America Cup. I don't know. I, I like cups from 7-Eleven. I like cups from Duncan. Don't know you mean soccer. Um, I, I have no idea, but I'm happy you love it. I'm excited to be here with you all, and I have a brand new segment. Are you ready? We do. We're going to do all of our favorite segments today, but I had to give a special, special segment for today. Take a peek. It's a brand new segment called Robert's Favorite Things, including my face plastered on Oprah's body. That's right, that you got that right. Well, I love entrepreneurs and I love people, and this is not a paid commercial, I am not getting paid. I just wanna support and show love. Samir is a teacher uh, over there in North Bergen. He works with me and he's created his own business selling Sonic Bright toothbrushes. Brilliant in every brush. You can get this. Just go to Instagram below Sonic Bright Electric Toothbrush. It's a good Mother's Day gift. It's a good Father's Day gift. You know your father has bad breath. We all know your father has bad breath. We all smell it. So we so we want to get this toothbrush. Look at this. I hit this button and now it's on gum care or it's on whitening or on polish. And look, I could just oh, it's deliciously good. And it vibrates and it's wonderful. My mother would love this. My mother has more water picks than the Hoover Dam. And she would love an electric toothbrush. What I want to say, though, is we all have day jobs. We all have hustles. We all want to be on Shark Tank. We all want to be the next big thing. Go to Sonic Bright Electric Toothbrush to help and support. And then every week, if there's a product that I love or something I see or I go to a restaurant I like, I think I'm going to use my platform to build up businesses and people who are out here doing great things. So to come up with an idea and have the guts to come up with fancy packaging and sell it, we got to give love to that. So Sonic Bright Electric Toothbrush. Go on Instagram or find it on Amazon. Congratulations to Samir. I'm going to be using it. I'm going to have the brightest teeth you're going to need to wear sunglasses. You'll be like, oh, Bannon's smiling. He's smiling. So thank you all for being here. I I am excited. Thanks, mom. My mom is here. See, she loves that. More water picks than the Hoover Dam. Rose Bannon. <laughs> so, we are going to talk about. Uh, let's 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 talk. <laughs> this show's nuts. What is wrong with you all? Why do you come here? This was a special week, and it's a big week on the roundtable because we've been doing so many Broadway openings um see thank you all uh broadway openings and my favorite opening ever was because my dear friend matt gould opened his show limpica and i was so excited to be there I, the pink suit came out of retirement on the red carpet with a new shirt my new flowered shirt thank you for the love you all sent shout out to my friend matt gould making his broadway debut as the co-writer and composer of an original broadway show you know how hard it is to get a show on broadway that's not a movie revival or a revival revival, but original. And my friend Eden Espinosa as Limpica, uh, looking brilliant and and sounding brilliant. It was a very very special night, and I got to um, 
be there with some of my Broadway Podcast Network friends. There's my friend Sam, who's on Survival Jobs Podcast. There's Joel Crump, who's a superstar. Uh, and we all got to be there on the red carpet. And there is the curtain call speech um, Matt gave with his co-writer, Carson. It was a, I was crying. It was a very special night. It was a very special show. LampicoMusical.com. If you want to see the footage of the whole entire red carpet, it's on this YouTube channel that you're watching, LampicoMusical.com. Or you can listen to it on the Broadway Podcast Network. It's all up there. So if you're, it's 40 minutes of red carpet, Dylan Mulvaney, um, Jay Harrison G, all the Broadway people that were there. It, it's, a, it's a really special night. And I went to the show and I got to be there for the opening night and get my opening night playbill. And then there was a fancy party, this party, this one, fancy party, uh, black tie, DJs and 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 food and and fancy drinks and and jazz bands and it was just a night. Eden, who stars in the show, went to the same acting school as me. So Lath, who went on to be in Rami, which was as a show that was he was there. It was just one of those magical New York City nights. A very special night and big, big, big shout out to my friend Matt Gould. Congratulations. Hi, Am Fran. I know you're watching. Hi, Grandma's watching. Hi, Christine. That's another entertaining, messy, messy episode. Mess, messy. Oh, hold on. Messy. You never thought you'd spend a Thursday night staying home watching a man on YouTube brush his teeth. But see, you're welcome. And we uh, we had a great night. It was a, it was a really magical, magical night. So thank you to Matt Gould for letting, inviting me to be there and his family. It was a, a special day. While I was at Lampika, I want to say thanks to my NJ Pack family, my Sam, my little Sam, who's my buddy. Um, he, they gave me tickets. NJ Pack gave me tickets for the Pet Circus, and he went to see the show with his mom and his friend, where this man owns the circus with these animals, and this bird bit Sam on the face. <laughs> It's not funny. He didn't get hurt. It pecked him. And if you watch the video, he goes like, oh, so you never look. It's a good experience. We, it builds character. But thank you, NJ Pack, for sending the tickets. I'm so happy that they got to go and enjoy it while we were out gallivanting. I also uh, got to go to the Rosie's Theater Gala. It honored Charles Randolph Wright, who's from Dream Girls, who directed Motown the Musical, who uh, directs a lot of television and film, including The Santa Claus. He was there to be honored. This is the ballroom of the Rosie's Theater Gala. And I got to speak again to B.D. Wong, who I told B.D. Wong that I loved him from Oz, totally forgetting Law and Order, totally forgetting Jurassic Park. He's done everything. He, Tony Award winner for Madam Butterfly on Broadway. But I will see B.D. Wong uh, tomorrow at the opening of The Heart of Rock and Roll. Um, the Huey Lewis show, and I'm going to have to make up to him that he's done a lot more than just just uh, Oz. He's done everything, and he is a big advocate for queer rights and queer parent rights, so shout out to B.D. Wong. And speaking of the one and only Judy Gold, who, yes, we virally, I called her Judy Gold, Julie Gold, and her name's Judy, and now every time I see her, she, you know, curses and causes an uproar, but I got her name right, and I love Rosie's Theater Gala. That video is also available for you to watch on YouTube or listen to on the Broadway Podcast Network. It was the big week. And this weekend, opening tomorrow in a show, two openings tomorrow in a show, Saturday NJ Pack, tuxedo fittings for weddings, Sunday a live podcast, Monday an opening. I need Broadway season to end. Next week is the last week of the season before it's award season. But it's going to be a wild, busy week. So there's a lot of content coming to you from the Broadway Podcast Network next and, and, and on Broadway World. And here, tomorrow's uh, Broadway World exclusive. We just have so much content. The Roundtable is just pumping out content. And um, David Corrins, who designed uh, Tommy and Here Lies Love and Hamilton, is on Broadway World. So we're just, woo! Robert Bannon is ready for retirement and sleeping. Yes, I've lost my mind officially. It was going for a long time, you know? Yes, congrats, congrats to Matt and the Pika family. Yes, poor Sam's, poor Sam's little eyeball. 
And Christine's there's Judy Gold, not Julie Gold. Julie Gold wrote from a distance, um, which you can listen to my version streaming wherever you uh, are. There you go. Sergio says he hates when I don't come to school. I know, Sergio. I'm sorry. I appreciate you, Sergio. You make me happy to be there. Somebody's excited to see me at school. Let's talk about a shameless plug. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm shameless. Because I'm shameless. Well, we have been talking about it all. Broadway World, this dog, I got to see Appropriate on Broadway, which was so good, people. It's so amazing. Sarah Paulson is amazing. It's about a family. A father dies and they're going through the stuff and all the family turmoil comes out and about. Michael Esper, who went to acting school, he, I went to William Esper School. His son, Michael, started in the show. Me and Mike went and saw it. So let's watch our video, our, a very, very, very touching uh, interview we did on Broadway World. It's uh, exclusively where you can catch everything. And then, yes, I sing, y'all. And I know we forget that I sing because I'm, I'm hosting so much, but I do sing. I do sing a little something, something. And uh, I would love for you all to join me at 54 Below come this June. June 14th, tickets are now on sale and you can grab your tickets at 54below.org. Diva list, the list gets bigger. I add more and more songs every single day. It is going to be a party. You could look at the videos of what we did last year and there is a virtual ticket. If you're not able to come to New York, it just went on sale. So get your ticket at 54below.org. Come see me, my band, my singers and my special guests. I have a lot of tricks up my sleeve. Yes, 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 I do. Thank you, Donna Marie. I know you're talking about me and not my dog. No I'm kidding. I <laughs> um, so as we party on here, um, oh my goodness, Christina. I see, see, I sing, I teach, I host, I direct, I mentor. I, I did, I had mentorship, I had theater club. Um, I, I, I had oh, he's tired. That's what you're saying. He's tired. He's tired. And I'm grateful. I'm really, really, really grateful. My life is so fantastic uh, on screen, off and on stage and off stage. So I'm doing well. Everything's good. Gravy. Um, let's talk about, we did the shameless plug. We don't have a hot take today. Do you want a hot take? No, we're going to just, I have a really funny, hey friend, hey, can we do that instead? Here's my hey friend, hey everyone. I'll be there for you. How you doing? Well, we have a fun hey friend, hey. And we, that's <laughs> weird. Happy Bannons. Thank you. I do. I'm very grateful. Um, we have a, and it's not celebrities, people. And that's what I try, you know, when I talk about the idea of moving or getting married or or life after uh, whatever's to come next, you know, people are always like, what about the red carpet? What about the, it doesn't tuck you in at night. It's fun. Um, you know, I I, I want, uh, uh, we, we want it all, right? So there's a way to have it all. There's a way to have it all. And we're going to get it. You and me. That's my prayer for you both. Speaking of prayers, next week, Kiera Sh Clark Sheard is here. And it's a really good gospel interview with the Clark sister's daughter, uh, Karen Clark's daughter. And she's a Grammy winning superstar. And she's really cute. And I love this chat. And uh, plus we'll do the Huey Lewis um, red carpet as well. But some big stars are going to be there. Cindy Lauper and Martin Short and all sorts of stuff. Sergio is telling me that his dog, he has a dog named Terry. Hi, Terry. Um, so our Hey Friend Hey, so I was at the Rosie Theater Gala and Nita Whitaker is a really great singer. She she made her Broadway debut in Trouble in My Mind, but she's been singing in LA and in the jazz scene and everywhere for decades. And when I did a show during COVID, she came on. She's brilliant. She was there. So I went over to, was going to go over to say hello to her. And I ran into Nona Hendricks, who, if you know anything about Nona Hendricks and my obsession with LaBelle. I'm obsessed with Patti LaBelle. I'm obsessed with LaBelle. I was friends with Sarah Dash. Nona Hendricks wrote a lot of LaBelle songs and was a member of LaBelle. So as I'm walking over to see Nita, I see Nona standing there. So I turn and I'm like, oh my God, Miss Hendricks, I'm such a fan. I love your music. I'm, 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 I'm this little guy jumping for joy. And she looked at me like, like a little startled and a little like, oh, Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
And I was like, and when I left and I went over to see Nita, Nita was surrounded by people and I didn't want to bother her because we were all going to the dinner. So I decide to then head over to the dinner. And as I'm about to sit at my table, who do I see walking in? But Nita is walking Nona into the, into the ballroom. So I book over to say, and I say, Nita, it's Robert Bannon. And she's, oh my God, Robert, how are you? How are you doing? So good to see you. And now her daughter is in the Paper Mill Playhouse show right now, Guns and Powder. Shout out to everyone there. They got critics pick. I said, how's your daughter? Blah, blah. So I turn to Nona Hendricks and I say, I didn't mean to startle you or scare you. And she says, you didn't scare me. I wasn't scared. I was like, no, no, I just, I... And, and, sh- and so Nita says, the sweetest thing ever, she says, he's a really amazing singer, which nowadays everyone's like, he hosts a show, he hosts a show, he hosts a show. But she said singing. And and I said, I need to take a picture with you, Nita. I haven't ever met you in person. We did all these interviews. So Nona says, I'll take it. Give me your phone. And I said, no, you need to be in the picture. I'm such a huge fan of yours. So shout out to my new friend, Nona Hendricks. And shout out to Nita Whitaker. There's Nita. There's Nona. I wanted to tell Nona to come to 54 Below because last year I sang Lady Marmalade. And she's written some of the biggest LaBelle hits. And now she writes musicals. And uh, Nona, we've been trying to get Nona on this show for a long time. Hi, David. So, um... Hi, David. Hi, David. Oh, Darius is here. He missed me brushing my teeth. He was late. He's He got a new car today. I brushed my... This is the round, the ketchup. I brushed my teeth on the air. Uh, I told the story about meeting Nona Hendricks. I talked about Lampika. You're up to date. Did I miss anything? My student, Sergio, says that I have a dog named... He has a dog named Terry. And... They all called me a happy Bannon. And that's a lot thanks to you. And I said I would give up all of the hoopla of my life to have a happy life. And they said we all like a happy Bannon. Now you're up to date. So Nona, I love that man. He's so good to me. So Nona Nona said um, uh, that she would come on the show. So I reached out to her people today. Now, out of all of the, my dad was like, you see all these famous people. Yes, they don't matter. They're just jerky turkey famous people that think they're important. They don't matter. But when somebody's music or art touches your heart and they mean something to you, if it's 50 million people or it's one, you know, Clarence, do you know what I'm saying? Do you guys get it? All right. So do you get it? He gets it. We are going to uh, Mama Rose says congrats. And she loves Darius for his car. Mama Rose got a car. Darius gets a car. You know what what I say? What did I say earlier when I opened the show? You get a car! You get a car! You get a car! You get a car! Everyone gets a car. I got a toothbrush. Now that's how you know you're married. Let's talk about this week's show. Broadway is in full swing and there's amazing shows on Broadway. We've been covering some of our favorite openings from Appropriate to Lampika to Water for Elephants to The Notebook. And we have some of the stars, the ladies. The ladies are here. Sisters are doing it for themselves on the Broadway for sure. And I had, oh, Marie says she needs a new car. She's been driving a Buick LeSabre from 2005. 2005. That's like Darius. My mom too. My mom was eight years. Darius's car was maybe 2009. So see, you're you people. That's why you all have millions of dollars in the bank, and you're smart. So uh, three powerhouse women are here. First up, uh, Samantha Pauley, who's from Six the Musical, and then went on to The Great Gatsby. Then Hannah Cruz, who's opening on Broadway tonight in Suffs, produced by Hillary Rodham Clinton. And then Jordan Tyson, who plays young Allie in The Notebook, is here. Three boom, boom, boom chats with three superstars. The ladies of the season are here on Z Round Table. Here we go. Well, this season, there's amazing new work on Broadway. And Hannah Cruz, listen, our next guest, when you research her, you've seen her. If you've seen Hamilton around the country, 
If you've been out in LA and maybe seen an ice princess, if you've been down to the public theater where all the cool kids are hanging out, making great art or coming to Broadway right now in previews, in tech, working all day and making time, probably on her dinner break to talk to us. Hannah Cruz is here to talk about stuff. So welcome to the round table. Thank you so much for having me, Robert. And happy Broadway debut. <laughs> Yes! Yes, it it's finally it. happened. <laughs> but I have a complaint, Hannah. Tell me. I did some research about you and I looked up your your hard paying your dues. Did you booked a you booked like a tour like directly from high school, didn't you? Yeah. Hannah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about it. How did it happen? Yeah, I um I was in high school and we had done Gypsy as our senior year show. And uh, it was like the time where YouTube was like kind of just becoming popular. And like, I remember all the University of Michigan kids were putting all of their videos up and it was like what you did. And I wanted to be just like them. So I put up like all the videos from, I played Mama Rose and Gypsy and uh, I put up my Rose's turn and it ended up going like kind of viral for the time. And because of that, I got invited to audition for the Legally Blonde non-union second national tour. And uh, I went and did it. And I think I went to like one callback and I ended up booking it. And I was supposed to go to college. I had auditioned at like 10 musical theater schools. I got into one and I was like all set to go. And then I convinced my parents to let me go on tour instead. And they said yes. And then I moved to New York directly after and I've been here ever since. And what a ride. Where did you grow up? Where was home? Uh, Connecticut. In Connecticut. Yeah, okay, so, so not far. No, you're like a tri-stater. Like, you know, you're in, yeah. the, in the neighborhood. Well, that story is amazing because talent is talent is talent. And that's that's it. They caught, they scooped you up and, and, and put you out in the road. And you did a bunch of tours and really fun, interesting. You want to take a little walk down memory lane with us? We oh, pulled, yeah. We pulled some moments of your career. Um, oh, like, like this here, <laughs> come on, Frozen. That was a great job. That was a great job. I was it was say great. It was we did like, I never did more than two shows a day. The show was like barely 90 minutes and Elsa's only on stage for maybe 15. The The hardest thing to do is let it go. And um, it was great. The, here, the kids, like I love children. So like, getting to see them in the front row and like singing along and they're so excited to see you. And uh, that job was really, really great. Um, I really enjoyed working at Disney. Well, when you talk about the LA singer singers, everybody rolls through Disneyland and comes to see that show. Yeah. And there's some amazing talented people that are in that show and have come from that show like you. Um, so, right. <laughs> and, and of course we, we would be remiss at it. We couldn't well, find a stage pitch, but there's, there's the ham, there's the ham pick you, backstage reading a book and touring the country. What was it like when you booked and joined that juggernaut of a musical? That was crazy. I really like was not, I got the audition when I was living in California doing Frozen. And uh, I remember getting the audition and being like, okay, well then maybe I'll book this in like five years. Cause I had been used to going in for a couple other big juggernaut shows and being put through the ringer for years and years and years and years and years. And uh, so I never thought I would book it. Um, so when it, and it happened very quickly. And uh, when I did book it, I think I was like in disbelief until my put in. And then it was like very surreal and very like, that's the most, until like now, I think as I age, I actually start to get more nervous um, going on stage. But that at that point that was like the most nerves i had ever felt doing that show um and like stepping out and singing eliza's first line in the opening is like it's very scary but um you know i met my fiance doing that show and uh i i think i really grew oh there he is my sweet baby it was yeah it was i mean it changed my life so i i i it, i'm so grateful for it I mean, we we know you're engaged because your ring is gorgeously blinding. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. He did a really good job. You deserve it. I, I we me and me and my Darius got engaged on New Year's, and and oh. and I said to him, 
you know, it's stressful to pick out a ring and, and it's a, it's a, and it's a lot, it's a lot. So good job. Good job to, to your mans. He did a good job. He did a great job. <laughs> and the Da Vinci Code was another job. Look at this oh, with our friend to our show, God. Mike Lurie, and you up oh, there in Maine making musical theater. You, Hannah, you've had quite the ride. It has been a ride. Yeah, it's, that was a play actually, which was like a big dream of mine. And still it, like, I, I want to do plays on plays on plays, please. So I loved doing Da Vinci Code. I loved doing it with Michael. He knows how much I love him. Um, that was the best. Well, now we talk about the public and you were in the show. We're talking about stuffs, everybody, which is now <laughs> previews about to open and you can go get your tickets while we're talking about it. Please make sure you go to stuffsmusical.com, grab your seats. The first preview was the other night and there's, it's going to be yeah. it's quite the moment. I mean, you have the president of the United States coming, you have Hillary Clinton for being a producer. I mean, this is quite the moment in time and in history and, and and it's as important of a piece as ever. How was your journey to this show? How how did you become a part of this this show? It's it's a funny story, and Edred, my fiance, will truly never let me forget it because I almost did not go to the audition um, because I'm a little bit of a baby and a little bit of a brat. And sometimes when things are like too difficult, I'm like, no, I won't do it. And I was doing, I was actually doing Young Frankenstein at Oak Quick Playhouse at the time, and I got. They wanted me to come to New York to audition for, to have my final callback for Seth's because I had self paid for it. And getting anywhere for, from Algonquin is like almost impossible unless you like want to drive the, the nine hours. Um, and I don't drive, so I can't like get an Uber for nine hours. And uh, so Edward was like, he was on tour at the time and he was like, I will get you um, a plane ticket and we will get you to New York. And so he helped me buy my plane ticket and I got done with a matinee. I got, I like hired a town car to take me to the Portland airport. I flew to DC and then my flight was canceled to New York. So Edred, I was like crying in the airport and Edred was like, I'll get you a hotel room and we'll get you on a 4 a.m. flight to New York. And so I spent the night in DC, got on a 4 a.m. plane. And then I think that was delayed. And I ended up having to go directly to the public to audition, which like, I don't like being unprepared like that for an audition. And I went in and they were so warm. My agents had told them everything that had happened to me. So they were like very warm, very kind. And I, I told Lee, our director, a million times, like I've never been in a room like that. I didn't know you could be treated like that in a room. Uh, just like just like treating each other like people. And um, I, I knew from that moment that it was a really special job. And then on the way back to Algonquin, I found out I had got it. And I was like, I mean, I've it's every actor's dream to work in the public truly it's just like such an institution and i was so so thrilled and i couldn't believe i was going to be working alongside people like jen clola and nikki and james who i've idolized my entire career and life um like you have no idea how many times i've listened to me in the sky nobody understands i've listened to that more than anyone and jen i mean jen does know that but um it was it was really remarkable um and that job I, at the public specifically, like made me grow as an actor, like exponentially, so. Well, it was a run that was extended and extended and got amazing reviews and really touched a lot of people. And like I said, it's as timely as ever. How do you describe the show? How, how do you, what's your elevator pitch? How do you describe what we see when we go see it? Oh God, I'm still like, I feel like I'm still working on the elevator pitch because like I'm now understanding what the show is more now that we're like running it in succession more. And now, you know, you learn a lot from every audience that you have. And I'm so excited to do it again tonight and learn even more. But it's like, I think, especially like from the public, you're going to learn a lot about American history that you did not know. Like it's actually shocking um, about what happened to these women that we do not know about. And, and these women's names who we've never heard who are like so integral to to the rights that we have today that we probably don't even think of, well we probably think about them now because um they're like scarily in jeopardy sometimes yes. um but it's it's like his you're gonna learn about our history all the while like understanding that like these these people and these relationships and these like interpersonal relationships repeat themselves just like 
century after century after century. And it's like, it's it's remarkable to watch, like old guard versus new guard, uh, like a, pers- a revolutionary idea to maybe go along with, with uh, the previous regime or to rebel against it in a more, like it's just, these things never stop happening. And to see these women as people, um, is 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 really remarkable and it's really an honor to get to portray them yeah and i, I i'm excited I, I i teach fifth grade history and we just finished our women's history month where we in new jersey and w- when i'm not talking to amazing people like you and we uh we spend every single day and to see the young girls in my class be so moved and taken aback about how short of a time it was where women didn't have the right to vote and what women went through and we are currently reliving fighting battles that have already been won um yeah. again so it's really important um to go see this show but it's also entertaining it's not like a big old yes. history book it's not going to be a lecture you're going to be singing and snapping and clapping along oh yeah the music is i've heard a lot from people who saw it yesterday like the music is like very infectious and like shayna is a brilliant brilliant writer and you're going to be like the themes that she uses and and the uh, the orchestrations by michael sterman like everything is the music will stay with you it stays with me and yeah. it stays with people like of course it stays with me because i do it every day but like i could hear people like humming it as we left the theater which i don't always like i'm not in the camp of like a musical is only good if you can hum the tunes i don't think that's always the case but i do think like when you're when you're in a musical that is like is kind of a history lesson in an entertaining way. I think it's helpful to have music that you can come away from it with and like still have in your brain. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so Shayna is in the show and yeah. music, and then just so happens to like write music with Elton John for Devil Wears Prada, you know, know. just on the cast, on the side. You know, Why not? <laughs> Why not? Can you explain a little bit of the backstory about when a show transfers, you have different roles you have your your roles have like how do how do these decisions happen is it is it a conversation is it is it a surprise like how do things like that happen what's the behind the yeah. scenes <laughs> after after the public uh i was doing only gold at mcc when we heard that we were gonna do a workshop uh right before the end of the year and uh lee called me and she was like so um, we've been thinking that maybe we want to try you as Inez and we want to see how you feel about that. And cause I had really fallen in love with Ruja and I really loved playing her. It was like a whole different side of myself as an actor that I, that I didn't even know I had. So it was like, it was very special to me. Um, and she was like, this is like a try, not a try. It's not an audition, but this is to see how you feel. And this is to see how we feel. And let's like, let's give it a try. And at first I was uh unclear how i felt about it um it it took me a while to find her um interestingly enough because i think like on her face she she can be quite simple and easy to play uh as a caricature but i think that like all of these women are real people therefore they're like very complex and uh but once i did find her which was like toward the end of the workshop and then we did a reading and then through rehearsals for broadway um now it feels so second nature that like i almost can't imagine playing roja anymore because i i feel like i have a brand new like uh like space to inhabit in the group um so it's really funny how that happens because you could look at them and think like they couldn't be more opposite but actually fundamentally they're quite similar it's it's really just in the physicality that they're different Oh, it's it's exciting. What a gift as an actor to be able to play both sides and, and to play two different parts in this show is I really love cool. stuff like that. Yeah, it's cool. I'm sure there is going to be a whole new generation of musical theater actors uh, and actresses uh, and people who are going to come learn so much, hear new music, and you're going to inspire so many people with this work. Um, so people need to get their tickets and come on down and see stuff yes. at this beautiful, beautiful, legendary music box. It's it's such a beautiful space to, to see a show. Um, what do you think, what do you hope we, when we go in, you have any words to the wise? What should we look for? What should we walk out and feel? What, what, what can we, what can we expect? I mean, there's so much happening. There's so much show. My, uh, my fiance compared it to like the Odyssey last night. He's like, it's just such an epic, like 
there's it's the story is wild so i would say like see it more than once because there's a lot going on and there's a lot of story and i think like i think it would benefit from like a second or a third or a fourth viewing i like i because i know if i was an audience member i would want to see it more than once it, it it's like a freight train it never stops and so i think it, and and i think it's fun to see because we all love each other so much um it's fun to see like the interpersonal relationships color and 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 make really rich all our relationships on stage um that's really fun it's nice when you really really love your cast oh yeah come on now i love this already well go to stuffsmusical.com make sure we gotta go because it's Hannah Cruz's Broadway debut, y'all. And go follow Hannah. This is Hannah Cruz. I'm going to be following her because I need to see what her she does for opening, what she does for her wedding, because I'm going to steal all her ideas. And then um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the plan. Congratulations on a lifetime of work already. And this being the Broadway debut, you're it's when you, this show opens, this will be a part of Broadway history and you, this is it. You're a Broadway performer forever and ever. And that's a lot of hard work. So congratulations. And, and I you, wish Robert. you the best. Friend. I'll be there. I can't wait to see the show. Yay. Let me know when you come. I was done. Thank you. Congrats. Yay. How cute is she? Suffs is open now. Tonight's opening night. So <clears throat> congratulations to them. And uh, I'm so excited for her. She's a sweetheart. We also have another sweetheart, Samantha Pauly. She made her Broadway debut. She was in six. And now she's bringing the great Gatsby to Broadway. And uh, she stopped by to say, hey, here's Samantha Polly. Well, one of the perks of being a director of the junior production of Mean Girls right now at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center is that I get like all the street cred and I bring all the receipts. Because when I talk to people like Samantha Polly and they know her from six and now they know her going to Great Gatsby, the musical theater kids in my class on Saturday were singing her music from her show screaming about the fact that Sam is coming to the show. And you can see Sam in The Great Gatsby right now playing on the Broadway, everybody. Sam Pauly, welcome to the round table. Thanks for having me. You made me so <laughs> cool and popular and you don't even <laughs> understand. <laughs> you don't I'm understand. so glad. Oh, we had a whole discussion right in the middle of our lunch break of our show about their favorite queen and they sang and they dissected the show. So thank you for adding kids everywhere can love and be introduced to musical theater. Oh my gosh, that makes me so happy. Thank, that is a very, very lovely compliment. <laughs> well, you have an amazing career. We love your, you sing for days and months and years and decades. And now you're on Broadway right now. Hmm? In the Great Gatsby, tell us how's previews, how's the shows with an audience, how's it going? It's good. I'm so happy that we finally have an audience. We had our first preview on Friday, um, where we had like an invited dress rehearsal on Thursday night, and it was, it, it it's just been such a relief to finally have people in the audience because, you know, between like doing it at paper, it was weird to do it at paper mill and to come back so quickly for a transfer and to go from having an audience to not having anyone for a while. And we were just, you know, we were at that point in tech where like the creatives have seen it so many times. So like, they're just taking notes and we would finish a number and like one person is clapping. So <laughs> it's nice to have people here. Um, things are still changing every day. We, I, I got to rehearsal today at one o'clock. Um, we added, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it, but I, we had to work on my number for two hours because we have added um, some pyrotechnics. So we worked on that for two hours today and it's absolutely insane. <laughs> oh my goodness. How, how is it? We've been talking, you know, the, tis the season on Broadway, everybody, mm -hmm. where we are in the middle of, of the season of shows opening and, and changes happening and things going on. What is it like when you get notes or you get new scenes or new songs or new blocking and you have to do it in front of an audience tonight? Oh yeah, um, I got here, I, my, my script is on the shelf above my head. I got here and I had um, five new pages today um, with some new things printed out. And um, while I was on stage working on something, our lyricist Nathan Tyson was like, do you think that maybe a new thing that just got added like two days ago new intro to my song, brand new words I'd never said before. He said, do you actually think we could maybe change these two words in that? And so I will try and 
throw that in tonight if I remember. It's uh, what's nice is that like they're throwing a lot at us every day and uh, you know, sometimes they're like maybe let's think about this. It's okay if you don't put it in tonight. Maybe we can do it tomorrow if you want. So they know that they are throwing a lot at us. Some of the changes are like so small that in the moment it is impossible to remember them. Yes. Um but we've got a team that is very understanding and and they know that they're they're throwing a lot of changes at us all the time. So we've we've got some very patient people. <laughs> well, you are no stranger to putting a show on Broadway, originating a Broadway show cast. You have you had the longest I I think you may have had the longest uh, opening night pause in history through COVID. Oh my it's, god. I know. Now you go from here's a little shot of the paper. This is the paper mill production. <laughs> and and the show, if you want to get tickets while we're talking about it, you can go to broadwaygatsby.com and get your tickets. Make sure you grab a ticket and come see the show. And if you want to follow follow Sam, follow Sam on Instagram at Sam Pauly. And, and you can follow and stay up to speed. Noah J. Ricketts is a good friend to this show. We love the Noah. He is the most brilliant, sweet, inside and out human being. What's it like to work with this cast, with Jordan and Eva and Noah and this amazing uh, ensemble that you have? They're really amazing. I... You know, I feel like with a show like Six that was so small, you know, we, we weren't like forced to get along, but we were very lucky with that. Our our group of the six of us and then all of our understudies, like we all got so close because we just got along. Um, and sometimes with bigger casts, you know, you can like really form your close friendships and feel like you don't. And I, you know, I don't see a lot of the ensembles often I was as I would like to because I'm on the completely other side of the stage from them and they're like on the fourth floor way over there. So I just don't go over there often, but I love everyone in this cast so much. Everyone is so nice. Our choreographer says this all the time that like, one thing this cast is gonna do is we are gonna laugh. We are all having a silly goose time all the time. People get stressed and you know, it's it's tech and we're in previews so things are stressful but like we are supportive of each other we are there for each other we take care of each other um we ask for what we need and we and we keep each other laughing which is which is really great um and as as far as the principles go we i mean we have like group texts chats i went out with eva and noah on saturday night i got home very late i mean i got home at 5 30 in the morning sunday was our day off so don't worry anyone out there i got home at 5 30 in the morning noah left and i facetimed him i said why did you leave he said because it's 3 30 in the morning <laughs> so we love to hang out <laughs> we were just with eva on the red carpet of the notebook and she's trouble. She can get you into a lot. She is a good old time. She well, that's that's the reason that I was out for out so late because she was like, now we're gonna go here. And oop, we lost your sound. Hold on one second. Let me try to fix. Do you no, still not. Um, don't worry. We may have to you may have to leave and come back in if we lose the sound. Let me see if I can. I'm a, like us in this area, we think of Iowa, but there's amazing theater. There's the people are dying for the culture. And when the tours come through or people travel to see Broadway, there's a huge community yeah. there. What was it like growing up in Iowa and loving theater? Um, well, you know, I, I did not, I didn't grow up doing theater. I didn't start doing theater until like the end of my junior year of high school. Um, my parents are not theater people. They're not artistic. Um, I sang in high school. I was like in choir and stuff, but like I didn't know anything about theater. I didn't know it could be a job. I knew nothing. Sophia, you um, and I, I, I think I just like tried out for the musical because my choir teacher was like, "Oh, it, I think you would have fun. You should just try out." Um, and college is really kind of when I fell in love when I was like, I think I'm good at this and I think it could be a job. Um, I ended up going to college for music theater because I didn't, I didn't really know what else to do. I didn't think I was good at anything. 
And I was like, well, I can give it a try. And, you know, if I don't like it, I can do something else. Um, so I didn't have like, I didn't have a lot of exposure to theater when I was younger. I was not, you know, going to theater camps and, and all this stuff. So I felt very behind a lot in college. And even now still, sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know this. I've never heard of this. Thing. Like I, sometimes I still feel like I'm <laughs> playing catch up. <laughs> Well, you're about to open a show on Broadway. <laughs> so I think you've caught up and are leading the pack. I mean, I, what I have been lucky enough to do so far between this and six is so far beyond the scope of anything I ever thought I would do in my entire life. So I feel, I feel very lucky. There's more. I feel like every day I notice a new thing <laughs> in like the set or someone's costumes that I'm like, when did we get that? That like, and this theater is massive. This theater seats, I think, 1,700 people. The stage is huge. Um, and I think we've really created something that that really takes up the whole space and really is a, a spectacle. <laughs> the theater itself is its own character because it's one of the most beautiful spaces to yes. see a Broadway show. Yeah, it's really gorgeous. So everybody, you know the assignment. Everybody needs to head on over to broadwaygatsby.com and you guys are gonna have a, the most amazing run. Something great is coming to Broadway. The Great Gatsby is coming to Broadway. It's in previews, it's gonna open and next month and you're gonna, you all are gonna take this roaring party all the way through Broadway and through this. Yeah. So congratulations, we're Thank so excited. You. I know my, my mentees, my Jillian and Halil are gonna be like just the gagged and the guy. <laughs> there she is, folks, she's there. There she is. Hey, hey. Well, we'll we'll be singing six until we all see Gatsby and then we'll be singing Gatsby for you. I yes, I hope so. And I see the so. show break all the legs, have the most amazing run and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. There you have it, Samantha Pauly. See, we're just rocking through this Broadway season with the ladies of the season. I saw the notebook a couple of weeks ago, the notebook open, and Jordan Tyson sings. We had John Cardoza here. We had Jordan on the red carpet, but we didn't get the chance to have a sit down chat with Jordan. When I had the chance to talk to her, I had so many things to say about young Allie. Jordan Tyson is here. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I had the chance to run on over to see the notebook, and we cried, and we hugged, and we had a whole moment together, and we've had some of Jordan's co-stars here. We had heard John here just a couple of weeks ago. We were on the red carpet and we got to speak to Jordan. You know, Baltimore is near and dear to my heart and Jordan represents the inner harbor. Come on, let's go Baltimore. Let's go New York City. Let's go Broadway debut. Jordan Tyson is here. Yay, thank you so much. I, I, so, Baltimore has been through it oh, over the past few weeks for sure. And, um, when I was I was very sick as a kid, and I lived at John. Uh, I lived in the hospital out there in Baltimore for a year of my life. Wow. So I can crack a crab. I know I know how to get. You know I know where Fort yes. Dix, Fort McHenry, Fort. Come oh on. my gosh! <laughs> so, how was it growing up here on the East Coast? And <laughs> when did you discover you love musical theater? Oh, first of all, I love that you have this just memory of Baltimore. I'm sorry that you were sick and had to be there, but what a crazy place to live. Um, so yeah, I, I was born in Long Island and I was raised half and half in Long Island and Baltimore. Um, and I love the East Coast. I, I've been told I would not do well on the West Coast. I don't know. I love the West Coast too, but there's something about the seasons and I don't know. I, I, it's just inside of me. So I think yeah. it's I my it. Yeah. I, I'm from Jersey, Long Island, Jersey. It's like the same thing. And when we're on the East Coast, you know, it makes, I don't know, we're a little tough and rough. Or, hey. A little bit. A <laughs> little bit. Yes. Well, I was reading uh, about you and on your website, you list some really fun, your person, you seem like the type of person that you just want to go out and have a drink and eat a piece of pizza with at two o'clock in the morning, Jordan. You seem like <laughs> a good time. Well, that's <laughs> hilarious because I'm also very much like, I like to be home, but I, I don't know. I have a, a sort of balance of 
I'm a homebody, but I want to see the world. I want to do it all. I don't want to, I, I don't want to be limited. I want to just do what I want. <laughs> I understand. I totally get it. So what we, I got the chance to see you, speaking of the West Coast, out in La Jolla and in, in Lampica. Oh, no, I didn't know that. I sure, I did, I did. Matt Gould is like a brother to me and we traveled across the country to see the, to see you and be in that show. And then now that journey, it's a big old regional show. You've done a bunch of work in musical theater, but there's nothing like getting that call that a show you're doing is coming to Broadway. What was the journey? How do you describe your journey to, to Broadway? Oh, my journey to Broadway has been so unique. Um, and it's really been, for everyone, it's personal. Everyone gets there in a different way. Um, and I don't, I think, I think I knew that on some level, but when you're going through it, I, I, I found myself looking over my shoulder, like, but they did this and they did, and it's like, no girl, that's not for you. That is not your journey. You have, I, I just had to find myself like putting on sort of horse blinders, you know, and saying, what do I want? Is this still what I want? And I think because my journey to Broadway, you know, to a Broadway stage took a while. It took a few, it took years, you know, of hard work, of hearing no a lot too. Um, I, I actually had the chance to say, is, is what I'm saying actually what I want? I got to question it over and over through the yeses and nos. So I, yeah, my journey has been unique, I would say, and rewarding. Yeah. Yes. Well, when you go see the show, everybody, when you step on the stage, Jordan literally opens the show. When you step on the when you when you step on the stage, um, and your voice comes out, and then you harmonize with John, and then all of that ensemble and cast sing together, it is a very special theatrical experience. How was it to build the chemistry that you all share on stage every night? It's amazing. Oh, thank you. It was wonderful and you know we just had the gift of time <laughs> what our show is all about you know what our show is excavating i guess um i was lucky enough to be a part of it since 2021 so there is no replacement for time you can't even if you have great chemistry with someone and you met them a week ago, there's nothing that's going to replace the fact that I've known John since 2021, you know? And so our friendship has blossomed off stage and therefore our work relationship has also become, we, we've become a lot more comfortable with each other. We've been a little more daring with each other in a way that uh, sort of, you know, blesses these characters in their relationship because they're falling in love and how vulnerable is that and now we can be more vulnerable with each other because of that time and not just with john but with all of them you know especially my my heart marianne plunkett with joy with joy woods and um yeah time is just blessing especially for theater pieces oh absolutely well we're we're talking about the notebook which is at the show and Feld theater right now and you can get your tickets like right this very second. Go to notebookmusical.com. And then we're gonna follow, we're gonna follow Jordan on on Cur Curly Broad on Instagram. That's you, me. That that's it. That's when, me, the baby. <laughs> when there it is. I love I'm obsessed with it and I love it. Uh, I'm obsessed. Well, you talk about Marianne uh Plunkett and 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 Dorian Dorian Harewood, who was uh, just here. Um what, do they Marianne? said on the red carpet that doing the show you have to have like a disconnect like you have to walk off the stage and like it's a very emotional story you you're talking about falling in love fighting in love leaving love They're, you're talking about time relationships etc how do you take care of yourself to tell this story eight shows a week and show up every day at the theater it's been a learning curve i don't think i knew how to take care of myself before and i still am learning as we go especially you know, this will be the longest run of a show I've ever done thus far. And so 
Um, actually, within the past few weeks, I mean, we just opened the show and stuff. And that's not even talking about the material itself, but just the whirlwind of opening and the business of it. Um, everyone and everything is clawing for my attention and all of our attention who are involved in the show. And so I found myself really having to make the grown up choices of what what do I want to give my attention to? What is important to me right now? Is Instagram that important? Oh. Is, you know, uh, hanging out with someone when I'm completely, you know, just exhausted from five shows in a row really important? You know, it's just I find myself having to, I don't know, choose, choose what I value uh, with my time. Um, I forgot. First question you no. asked. How do you take care of yourself? What what is the routine? Yeah, I also let me shout out my former professor. She's an intimacy coordinator now, and she just released a book that came out on April first. Her name is Brooke Haney, and uh, she was the first person who ever introduced warm downs to me and wow. actors warm down. And so for years, I've been. It's unique to each character you play, but for Allie, my warm down is a vocal actual exercise where I bring my voice down because I've been belting for two hours, you know, and then it's bringing it back to music that I listen to and music that makes Jordan feel comfortable and doing some yoga and, you know, it, it varies day by day, but there's this sort of uh parameters of a few different tools that i'll use each night to come back to myself yeah yes. shed that character and those feelings and be you be the the person that is jordan Actually, um, yeah you talk about music when what, what kind of music has, has inspired you were you a theater kid were you someone who was listening <laughs> to the radio like what made jordan want to sing what what makes jordan want to sing now my siblings will laugh at this because I have been singing since I could open my mouth. I would sing at my dinner plate and say, I love carrots and potatoes. They're all my favorite. Like making up songs from anything that was in front of me. Um, you know, road trips were marked by George. You don't know this song. It just came out yesterday. Why are you humming? And I'm like, but I know the chords somehow, you know, before I could name knowing what chord progressions where I was like, mm -hmm, I'm jumping on that. Yeah. So as soon as I could open my mouth, I've been singing. I did not get into theater though until high school. I did my first musical, um, but other formative memories. I mean, I grew up with a lot of Motown in my house, folk music in my house, R&B, jazz, I, you know, Nora Jones, uh, her, her big album was, uh, you know, something that I feels like in my bones. All of these sort of a large array of music um, raised me um, without my realizing it. Uh, but yeah, I just remember also in middle school seeing my first piece of sheet music and saying, what the hell is going on here? And I need to know what this is, how to read this. I don't, you know, and so it was just like a challenge for me. I need to be mentally stimulated <laughs> in order to feel interested. Hey, I wrote this and I love this song and you are now, you know, I now give you full reign to use your voice on it. It's just, you have to kill the ego and, and let, I don't know, let the story free and I don't know if I've learned that from my own writing yet, but I'm definitely taking a note <laughs> from Ingrid well, on that. <laughs> well, when we, I went with my friend Mike, Mike has had never seen the movie. He has never read the book. He was sitting there crying. He was a <laughs> uh, Jordan at intermission. He says, my goodness, she sings the bejesus out of this music. And <laughs> she, you do, this whole cast does. Yeah. And I think what you, what I learned 
in 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 the musical and I'm watching it is that for so many people who are know it from other iterations of it, it's the end. It's it's that the time flies by and the love and 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 life ends. But what you guys do so well in the storytelling is that you show us the journey. It's the journey. It's from the beginning, the middle. There's there's a whole life that we see, and that's what this show is so important is to value every minute, everybody value every single part of it it's a real baton pass like a race you know back and forth okay i have the stamina and i just did my whole part and now here i pass it to you so that you can you know figure out this part of the story well people get tickets sit in the front row so you can get wet bring a poncho yes. and, <laughs> and, and and follow follow jordan because the music it's just only begun there's going to be yes. more theater tv film music concerts cabaret life Come on. On. all okay. of it curly broad on instagram and then grab your tickets it's the perfect date night it's the perfect show to take a mom a brother a friend a best friend a, a, a lunchtime wednesday afternoon date whatever. <laughs> whatever you need to do get on down see notebookmusical.com jordan i'm excited because we just i want to live in that velvety delicious toned voice all day long oh Come robert on. thank you <laughs> that means a lot congratulations we're so excited for you Thank you so much. Yes, come to the Schellenfelds. Uh, we are so excited to share this story. It is time. We are here to to hold hold our audiences. You know, we're just so excited. Thank you. Congrats. Enjoy the run. Have the most amazing time. Thank you. How cute is she? Oh, see, Marie says she's so adorable and informative. She's so smart. She's so sweet. And Marie, when I tell you, you hear her sing. Oh, her voice is gorgeous. It's like butter. Butter. I can't believe it's not butter. Butter. Three amazing stars. Hannah Cruz in Suffs. Sam Pauly in The Great Gatsby. Jordan Tyson over there in The Notebook. What lovely and amazing super talent ladies on Broadway. They're all stars wishing them continued success. There's so much Broadway to see. There's something like 16 or 17 openings this month. Uh, so get a ticket to see a Broadway show. Go see a tour. Go see a regional show. Look, Marie went and my neighbors went to the Richmond Park High School production of Chicago. And it was amazing and bananas. There's art no matter where you live. You could live in Utah. You could live in Thailand. Wherever you are, go support local art and theater. Uh, everybody, make sure you check us out always at the Broadway Podcast Network.com. I hope to see you on Sunday for a live podcast taping. Yes, yes, yes. The round table. If you want to see us do uh, an episode in person, make sure you come down and see us. Get your tickets to see me at 54below.org for June. Prize around the corner. And if you liked this show, you can always follow me at Robert M. Bannon. You can listen to me every day on the Broadway Podcast Network. And tomorrow, an exclusive chat will be up tomorrow night on Broadway World. Just go to Broadway World, type in Robert Bannon, and you'll see all the magic. <laughs> thank you all so much for being here. And thank you, Don, Donna Marie, my friend. I appreciate you so much. I look forward to you next week. The red carpet of Huey Lewis in the News is brand new show, The Heart of Rock and Roll. All the stars will be here and the VIP arrivals, including Huey Lewis. Plus, Kiera Clark Sheard. That's right, the platinum selling gospel diva, songstress from Detroit, will be in the house. So, it will be a big old show on Thursday. And then the week after that, the men of Broadway season. So, so much coming our way. So many shows uh, on the way. So, hang tight, stay with me. There's always more love than there is hate. There's more joy than there is sadness. And there's more good than there is bad. I look forward to seeing you again next time. The, be the best is yet to come. Thank you for being here. I love you all for watching. Till next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>